The next speaker is somebody I have admired uh, uh, for long, uh, uh, whose mails I read uh, with great care on various mailing lists. Uh, I take so much time to read her mail mails that I really wonder how she manages to write so many mailing lists, uh, uh, write so many mails. She's the uh, Intellectual Property Director at EFF, Carolina Rossini. So thank you everybody and I'm sorry I'm the last barrier between you, lunch and uh, dinner and between you and the party tonight. So I'm going to try to keep the modes up um, with the presentation. Um, so let me see here how we start this. Okay. So my task here is actually to also talk what lies ahead of us. And the future, I'm not sure how bright it is, but Vera and some other folks said, try to be positive. So I'm going to really try to be positive here and really bring that at the end of the presentation. Uh, in uh, many of our countries, we actually take our freedoms for granted. It's so easy to access the internet and to copy stuff that people don't realize that actually there were a lot of conscious choice about being an open from the logical layer, the structural layer to the content layer of the internet. And even the model that was adopted by W3C many years ago in this regard. But if we take this freedom for granted, we actually can be a uh, kick it or like by trade ag obscure trade agreements that we all face. We heard a lot of ACTA here, but my role is actually to tell you about anov another uh, trade agreement, new trade agreement that's being negotiated uh, primarily in the Asia Pacific region, but actually can affect all of us with time, which is the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Uh, so these agreements that sound abstract and far away, they actually can impede uh, technological innovation and the public interest. And not just in internet and copyright matters, but also in the access to, uh, access to medicine matters. And we have many groups here with, with us, Public Citizen, uh, Universal Life for Medicines, and many others actually working together with us, the consumer groups, uh, on this issue. We were actually, many of us, a couple of weeks in New Zealand. So as I said, I think us has a movement, has uh, this strong community that our friends from Open Air were talking about, we have to always make the conscious to be open. To be open in terms of the policies we support and to be open in the terms of how we collaborate in terms of networks, right? Like we heard in the video. And there are three main takeaways that I would like you to learn from today, from if I, if, if I can pass something to you, is that complex right issues are being negotiated in non-transparent, uh, non-democratic forums undermining WTO and WIPO. Like it feels that we like WTO and WIPO, but there is worse things out there. Uh, and WIPO and WTO, they did a lot of efforts to become transparent. We still know that many actual decisions take place in corridors and by phone and by mail, but they are still a step uh, 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 away than many of the trade agreements. Uh, copyright holders' rights are expanding, and ISPT, uh, ISPs, uh, internet service providers, are being pressured uh, through uh, 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 increasing an expanding system of secondary liability, uh, while exceptions, limitations, and fair use are being threatened. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. And we all have our roles on this. You can be a lawyer, you can be an expert, you can be a... And these new uh, treaties, they actually play the role of what we call policy laundering. And I'm sorry, there is no good translation for that in Portuguese, but it is to decide outside your democratic institutions that were placed in your country what the policy and law is going to be in your own country. Uh, and TRIPS, as Peter Drahos has, to, uh, has, has uh, taught us, did not turn out to be as many developing countries had hoped, and actually they were promised, uh, the, the end of multinational companies' plans for the globalization of intellectual property rights. And if you follow history of IP rights, it's really interesting to see how in many of these forums, business came together in, in, in associations or groups to actually uh, be the expert advisors for these trade agreements. So TRIPS had a specific trade agreement um, uh, that was the Advisory Committee on Trade Negotiations. TPP has 600 trade advisories uh, that have to sign an EDA to be part of that. Uh, civil society has Electronic Frontier Foundation, we and many others, we have decided to not 
be uh, to not sign because we want to, to raise awareness of the public in, in that negotiations. Uh, Derechos Digitales, who is another very important NGO in this context, also uh, didn't sign the NGO and, and, and like that. Um, but one of my roles here uh, in TPP is kind of show to you how the trade agreements issue, how intellectual property evolved in, this, uh, in the context of trade agreements. And it's really funny, I tell to my colleagues at TFF, we are moving to a new building, that I want to play uh, that game, I don't know the name in English, but there was a map and you place the, the boats around and you conquest new countries and things like that, because that's exactly what's happening here with trade agreements. So you see in Greece after the years, this is a study that just came like a month ago from some folks at WTO on the increasing uh, 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 number of IP issues in trade agreements. Most of them are actually, they, not, not most of them, but they start highly and strongly uh, on the access to medicine issue, on patent issues, but uh, 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 from, from year to year they expanded to copyright and ISB liability issues. And uh, the folks divided in some groups, they analyzed 194 regional trade agreements uh, that were notified to WTO, that were deposited in WTO, and then they come from uh, general IP provisions to reference to specific IPR types. It's very in interesting, and for Brazil it's very interesting because we have a strong discussion on that, on geographical indications, how it's expanding. It's not the FF area, but many of you folks work on access to biodiversity here. Uh, and 54 of those con concerning pharmaceutical issues. And the, the basic message here uh, to the government of uh, US from companies is actually the US government was, uh, should pull every lever at its disposal in order to obtain rights result from the US on intellectual property. And I like a lot this graphic here. It's a little um, blurry maybe to see from every place you are, but actually it maps in a hub style. We were talking about the mapping network, right? But that's exactly the same theory applied to trade agreements. And if you see here what is in hub, you see US in a really big center there. And the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement is getting all these folks here, right? And that is not uh, just because of number of countries. They will represent, if they evolve for the 21 countries of uh, the Asia Pacific from APEC, 40% of the population. But if you see flow of capital between these countries in terms of intellectual property rights and royalty payments, it's really increasing the impact of the TPP would have from less developing countries to bigger, to developed countries, but also uh, a change of priorities on how countries do enforcement. So we, are, we were concerned about ACTA because of the high, the strong enforcement provisions, but TPP also have those provisions. Um, so many of us are here already, are, we heard about ACTA uh, today, so I don't wanna enter much in this. And we can spend like uh, hours discussing this, so I'm happy to do that later. It's, it's really interesting to understand the relations and when it's capital, when it's enforcement. Much of these lines is about enforcement and not a uh, uh, flow, but um, we can do that another time. So many of us talked about ACTA, right? And I think what, what, taught, what ACTA taught, uh, taught us, what PIPA and SOPA taught us is uh, the power of the community. People never went, like, uh, went to the streets in regard to trade agreements relating to IP. People have been going to the streets for many years in regard to union rights, and these folks are still working on TPP and, and uh, issues, for example. The unions are really strong in TPP, but it's the first time that people on the streets get conscious. But I'm very concerned that folks that were aware of the ACTA issue are not aware of the TPP issue. And the TPP text is, it's, it can be actually much more frightening than the ACTA text. And just because it's in the Pacific, we think that will not uh, impact us. But the point is, there is a domino effect, and there is also a barrier that those countries will put for countries that want to uh, have negotiations and commerce with the Pacific region. So there is a big pressure here uh, uh, for countries to uh, adopt these TRIPS plus norms uh, and join TPP. Um, so ACTA, as you know, uh, Mexico and have, Japan have ratified, while New Zealand and Australia are discussing the ratification during 2013 with uh, 
public consultations. The final text of ACTA does not include the, uh, the mandate on internet intermediaries, but I think Vera mentioned that earlier. The Article 30, uh, 27 opened the door for, uh, for a lot of issues, including the uh, public-private cooperation. So this is something that we really should be paying attention to. Uh, IPAC in US, we call her the IP Kizar, she is the woman in the White House that coordinates all the enforcement strategy in the US. She doesn't have hierarchy uh, uh, above the agencies, but she does coordinate the strategy. She's coming up with a strategy now in December, a new strategy for the next three years. And the point here is a big, um, I have just four minutes, uh, a, big, uh, inf uh, a big priority to private public partnerships for enforcement. So you are using the government to enforce private interests, and that's a really uh, questionable issue. And ACTA is still watching us. ACTA is actually, test from ACTA has been said that is appearing in CETA, which is the trade agreement that currently is being negotiated between in, uh, European Union and Canada. Uh, let's see where that goes. And thankfully, there is already some uh, public awareness and public uh, mobilization around that. And TPP, as I was saying. So TPP has 11 countries now. Canada and Mexico already joined. They were in the New Zealand round. They are a little lost, but they are uh, entering the negotiations strongly. The ratification of ACTA by Mexico was said, was related to the, the has a condition for the entry in the TPP. Japan uh, was about to sign. There is some public pressure. Uh, we're going to see what's going to happen next year. In terms of scope, it extends restrictive intellectual property laws across the globe and rewrite international rules of its enforcement. The enforcement uh, part of the IP chapter is long, detailed. It uh, exports the DMCA approach, but actually goes beyond the DMCA from US, which is the copyright law. Uh, and has a lot of board enforcement, a lot of public-private partnership issues. So it's, it's, it kind of gives me bad goosebumps when I, every time I go back to it. And as I said, it's going to cover 40% of, uh, of the world's population if uh, the goal is 21 countries. Two main issues. Uh, the liquid IP chapter from February 2011 has, again, trade agreement, civil society, we don't have access to the tax, it's really hard to work with it. Sometimes we are talking to the delegates, we don't even know if they, that actually is the final text. Uh, so it's kind of working in a, in a, black, uh, in a black hole. Uh, but anyway, they, there are many provisions uh, that choke free speech, innovation, privacy, and digital rights. And at the same time, we are locked it out. And last round in New Zealand, we are literally locked out. Because in general, in all the previous rounds, we actually could as assess the venue, and we would have all the informal conversations with the delegates during cough breaks and so on. And this time, they literally locked us out, giving access to the venue just uh, during the stakeholder meeting, which was one day out of 10. Uh, so for example, what TPP does. Uh, there is the expansion of uh, enforcement around uh, digital uh, rights management and uh, the creation of a new cause of actions for those countries that don't have that and a creation of a layer on top of copyright and also criminalizes the manufacture and distribution of technology to break digital locks. Uh, and I really think this undermines a lot the positive agenda that we are pushing at WIPO. Uh, it's another provision is that it expands the protection and close, again, the public domain uh, uh, from uh, 50 to 70 to 120 years. That's already standard US, but it's not in many countries that are now, being, uh, that are now negotiating the uh, um, TPP. And uh, like ACTA is a plurilateral agreement that will heighten in the global IP enforcement norms. So just talking briefly about two uh, main issues. So the digital locks, and I'm going to pass fast, but my presentation is already in Twitter under the Congress uh, hashtag, so you can download there. 
So it overreads national copyright laws exceptions. There are chilling effects on scientific research and publication, anti-competitive misuse, and stifle technology innovation. These are actually the impacts of DMCA in US that we see happening also through the expansion of TPP because TPP is using the same rules. That's uh, in, uh, and in Article 16.3 of the liquid version from February 2011. We have the, uh, the system for ISP liability, and we really, uh, by reading the text, they don't, the text doesn't ex uh, expressly uh, uh, say you have to have a three-strike policy, but actually the text says provide legal incentives, and they mention this connection depending on, on, on the on the, on the system they adopt. Another risk I would like to mention is the three-step test. The three-step test was mentioned here today many times. Uh, we are really concerned. Uh, at the same time, we want to applaud US, right, Shen? I don't know if Shen is in the room. <laughs> but we also are very critical of the language the US is proposing uh, for the three-step test. Uh, many of the organizations we are supporting, uh, uh, the, the Chilean and and uh, some other countries' provisions for that. Um, and they actu we actually think that the three-step test, the way is, pro pro uh, is proposed, is actually going to restrict fair use. And this is really bad, right? People are trying to, to hinder fair use, but actually we have shown many times that fair use and expansion of fair use is good. And our friends here before me just talked about that. And there are studies to prove that. We can criticize the methodology, but we always criticize the methodology of the numbers brought by business whenever they bring, if they bring, because many times they don't have numbers at all. So fair use accounted for more than 4.5 trillion in annual revenue in US, generating in the first quarter of, of last year 233,000 jobs just in California, fastest growing se sector, the, the ICT sector based in and, and fair use. And many VCs would actually stop investing in startups in this region, in this area, if SOAP and PIPA, which have some similar language to TPP, would have passed. Similar studies were done in both Australia and Singapore. So there is some data here. I, I, I presented these studies uh, for many delegates in a, in a lunch on we, Internet and Z put together in New Zealand. So they are available online too. And and going back again, right? So international negotiations, they mean seeing abstract. It's really hard sometimes even prove to US lawyers or our folks in our societies why that's important, why that's gonna affect. And it's been really hard for us and for all the organizations involved in TPP to mobilize and take folks to the street because the risks are very similar. Uh, but these trade agreements, they will become laws in our countries. And they will become, they will, they will act as a domino effect to the countries. Not those countries that will not have commerce in that region, but actually for new FTAs that will come up. Because if you want to do a FTA with Japan, of course the minimum standard of Japan with your country will be the TPP if Japan enters the TPP. So we need to understand that uh, network hub spoke effect in terms of, of, of this moving forward. And Ronaldo mentioned the open government principles. I even actually think the open government principles the, of the partnership are actually broader in terms of ensuring uh, democratic participation and transparency. So the way that folks are negotiating these 21st century trade agreements are actually against these principles. So again, if we take freedom from granted, even in obscure trade, uh, 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 obscure trade agreements, we may allow those agreements to impede technological innovation and issues related to public interests. So we must take action anyway. So think about your role in this and take action. And don't mess up with the internet, okay? We come... <laughs> I really like to say that we are a strong community. I actually just got that from from your slide, I was paying attention to the video, I really like that we, we are posted. We are a strong community, and we have been a community for 10 years. So we need to keep strong, but we need more social capital. We need to bring new folks, okay? Uh, and I like to say that we are part of what I call the internet immune system. We need to grow that immune system. We are part of access to life immune system, trying to include here the, the, the discussion with the access to medicine folks. So that's it. Uh, so thank you very much, and just two invitations. One, 
Uh, we have a platform that the FF hosts, but is a collaborative platform to map all these threats, and everybody's invited to write like a country report, and that's published, so I'm happy to talk to you, and let's go party. We are in Rio, so thank you very much. <laughs>